Ladies and gentlemen, Snapshot 22W45A for Minecraft 1.19.3 is here, with new experimental bamboo blocks, a new look for the Vex, and much more. My name is Sly Slime, come with me as we explore the changes in 22W45A. Let's start with those experimental blocks and with a reminder that you can only use these blocks if you activate the Update 120 experimental pack when you create your world. Bamboo blocks can now be created by crafting from 3x3 bamboo. These blocks act like log blocks of bamboo. You can strip them and get a stripped version and you can craft them into planks, although you only get two planks from this, as opposed to the four you get from other wood types. With this change, you can no longer craft bamboo planks the way you could in previous snapshots, and the hanging sign recipes for bamboo hanging signs now use bamboo blocks instead of planks. The jungle hanging signs have had a texture update to match the other hanging signs. And there are new icons for bamboo rafts and rafts with chests. Let's stay on the experimental theme with the camels, also only available with the Update 120 experimental pack. The passenger in the second seat of the camel could trigger the dash. It would use up stamina and trigger the animation, but not actually make the camel dash. That is fixed in this version. The second seat passenger no longer sees the stamina bar and can no longer use the dash. And a glitch where you could see through the camel's neck as it was standing up has been fixed. Let's move on to regular, non-experimental mobs. The Vex has a brand new look. The new model is smaller and looks more like the LA. Despite this, its hitbox has remained the same size as before, since Vexes were certainly hard enough to fight already without having an even smaller hitbox. The eye position of piglins, zombified piglins and piglin brutes has been adjusted to match where their actual eyes are. Horses could sometimes suffocate when moving through nether portals, that is fixed in this version. And the mobs had certain... issues with firing crossbows in the last few snapshots. That is also fixed. Let's move on to gameplay changes, but let's stick with the crossbows. When using a crossbow with the multi-shot enchantment, projectiles now go the way you think they would. Using a bucket of water on a waterlogged block now acts the same way as using a water bucket on a full water block. It empties the bucket into the block. A change has been made to shulker boxes. When opened, they no longer provide a supporting surface on the side that opens, and blocks placed there that need support will now pop off. There was a problem where players in multiplayer could become desynced for a while when viewed by other players after using another portal, which is fixed in this snapshot. And death messages have been fixed when being killed by TNT. And by TNT minecarts. TNT minecarts now also keep track of who triggered the explosion in a similar way to regular TNT. There's more still, but if you like this video this far, please absolutely blow up that like button like a TNT minecart. It might seem silly, but it really does help out with a YouTube algorithm that has been hitting me hard lately, so thank you. Fix for a world creation bug. You can no longer use disabled experimental blocks as part of a super flat world preset. A new option has been added in this version. It is found under the Controls Options menu and is called Operator Items tab. The default setting is off and if you switch it on and you have the required permissions, you'll be able to see operator-only blocks and items in the creative inventory. Speaking of that, let's get into changes for the creative inventory. The operator-only blocks that were previously found in the redstone tab can now be found in a new tab if the new option is on. This tab can be found in the bottom right and it now also contains the structure block, which was previously missing, and all variants of the light blocks. Tabs are a bit more narrow, making space for a new colored blocks tab, which all the blocks that have variants of all 16 colors have been moved to. A couple of tabs have also been renamed. Consumables is now called food and drinks, and crafting is now called ingredients. Access can now be found in the combat tab, as well as the tools and utilities tab. All versions of suspicious stews that can be crafted are now available in the food and drinks tab, with a new tooltip showing which effect that stew has. This tooltip is only shown in the creative inventory and will vanish as soon as the item is picked up. Pressure plates and buttons can now be found in both redstone and building blocks tabs. All three flight duration of rockets can now be found in the tools and utilities tab, and a whole lot of items have been reordered for consistency. Tooltips for items in the creative menu now show which tab the item belongs to in all the special tabs like search and survival inventory. In other UI changes, the open to land screen has been improved and now has a field for setting which ports should be used. You can leave this blank to have everything work like before. 
The game mode and the allow cheats buttons now also start out with the values that match those of the world you are playing in. When crafting a map, the tooltip now correctly shows the zoom level of the result, rather than of the input. The teleport to team member functionality in spectator mode now only shows up for teams that actually have team members to teleport to. And some text fixes have been made, including for references to reporting in single player, and for lava in the lava source conversion game rule. Chat, hover and click events now end up in the right place if you have the line spacing chat setting on a non-default setting. In visual news, the new default skins for players introduced at Minecraft Live are now available for players who are playing the game offline. The enchantment glint on a lodestone compass now looks like it should again, and the scaffolding texture has been updated to better match the colors of the new experimental bamboo blocks. In sound news, there are new unique sounds for the experimental bamboo hanging signs being placed or broken, and step sounds for walking on them. Sounds for placing and breaking nether hanging signs, and for walking on them. The experimental chiseled bookshelves have new sounds for placing and breaking, walking on them, adding a book, adding an enchanted book, removing a book, and removing an enchanted book. And the sounds for weighted pressure plates have been adjusted. The tracks for the wild update music have been tweaked to play with a slightly lower volume, and the Enderman subtitle for screaming is now different from the subtitle for their idling sound. In technical news, starting with commands, the publish command in single player now has new arguments letting you specify the port, enable commands and set the game mode just like on the open to land screen. In tag news, the overworld natural logs block tag has been removed and a bug has been fixed that made empty tags a valid match for empty slots in shaped recipes. The resource pack version is now 12 and the changes for pack version 12 include a new texture format for vexes change to the creative inventory tabs.png file where there is now one extra column of tabs and each tab is 26 pixels wide rather than 28. Finally, the default skins have been moved. There is now a players folder with two subfolders, slim and wide, each of those containing a variant of each of the default skins. A couple of bugs have also been fixed, including one that would mark an entire resource pack as invalid if any model file contained any error and another problem where symbolic links didn't work in resource pack folders. Finally, in stability and performance news, several crashes have been fixed, and the performance issue with B's pathfinding has also been fixed. That is all for Snapshot 22W45A. My name is Slime. thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.